This morning we are reflecting on the Feast of Epiphany, which comes on Friday of this week. In the Western Church, which we are a part of, Epiphany is a time of celebration, remembering that God incarnate, God with us, the one whom we call Emmanuel, has been revealed to the Gentiles in Jesus, this child born in a manger. This idea of Jesus being revealed to the Gentiles is reflected by the story of the Magi, the ones from the East who come to worship. So we read in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the East came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. The Eastern Church has a slightly different understanding of Epiphany and what we are celebrating at this time of year. In the Eastern Church, it's not so much the arrival of the Magi that is commemorated, but rather the baptism of Jesus as he is revealed to the world as the Son of God. In the Eastern Orthodox churches, they don't even call it Epiphany. They call it something else. They call it Theophany, which literally means the revealing of the manifestation of God. Theo and Fani. Theophany. The revealing of God. God with us. So what began in the early church as a commemoration of the baptism of Jesus has also grown to include all of the events between his birth and his baptism, the arrival of the Magi, his baptism, and often also including the miracle at the wedding in Cana where he turns the water into wine. Because in all of these things, Jesus is revealed as the promised one. In Mark chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, we see this reflected in the gospel stories. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. In our common usage of the word epiphany, we actually, we, we have this idea of a revelation of something. It's usually like a sudden revelation of a perception where we finally get it. That aha moment where the essential nature of something, the true meaning of something, what it really means and its implications becomes a reality to us. When we have those moments of insight, those moments when we realize the truth of something that is before us, it prompts in us all kinds of responses. Now, it's been pretty snowy the last little while here in Winnipeg. I don't know if you've noticed or if you've shoveled. Uh, We do most of the time. But I do know that there's been a few times in the last couple of weeks as I've been driving from my home in River Heights area down here to church at the office, that as I'm driving along Pembina Highway, that I'm guessing which lane I'm in. Or if I'm in a lane at all. I know the general direction I'm going and I I can see the guardrails or the curbs or the piles of snow perhaps on either side. So I know I'm kind of in the right direction, but the road in front of me is snow from one side to the other. There are some tracks here and tracks there, but I can't see where the lane is. But every once in a while, there's that spot where there's been enough traffic or the plow went by recently where you can actually see one of the painted lines on the road and you realize just how far out of your lane you are. 
Maybe a better way to put it is how far into the next person's lane you are. And when you see that, you see those markings on the road, and you see where you're supposed to be, what do you do? What I do is slowly and carefully ease over to where I'm supposed to be, the lane where my vehicle is supposed to go, so that I can get where I'm supposed to go and I don't run into others and I don't cause damage to myself, my vehicle, or to others. When we have these epiphanies, when we see clearly what is going on in front of us, we change course. We reorient ourselves. We take action to move into the ways that we ought to be going. This morning we have lit the candles of hope and peace and joy and love, reminded again and again that with in the person of Jesus, this child born in the manger, we find hope. We find peace. We find joy and love. And that this is only possible as we walk with Christ. As we receive the presence of Christ in our lives, as we live in submission to Christ as our King, made possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus, the promised one. The Magi come and worship. They come and worship someone they do not know, someone they have never met, because it was revealed to them in the signs in the heavens that they studied that this child was a special king. And so because it was revealed to them, they changed course. They left their home and they headed to find this child. In this coming year, we have the opportunity to reorient ourselves once again, both individually and as a body of believers who join together to lift our eyes, to see the signs in the heavens, to hear the words of truth in scripture, and to allow the truth to be revealed to us again. And as we see clearly who God is, God's faithfulness, God's love, God's manifest presence with us through Jesus Christ, we reorient ourselves. We renew our commitment. We turn our eyes again to the one that has called us and our lives are reoriented towards him. In this new year, may your heart and mind be open to see and to know Christ clearly as Lord of your life. May we reorient our hearts reorient our priorities and our lives each and every day to this divine reality that we are celebrating at this time of year. May we proclaim to our world that a king has been born, that the Messiah, the promised one, has come, that Jesus has died for our sakes and has been resurrected in victory over death. May we proclaim that Jesus lives in our hearts, and that he will come again to set all things right in this world and in our hearts and in our lives. For Jesus is our hope. Jesus is the one who brings us peace, both in the sense of freedom from conflict, but also in the reconciliation of all things, the reconciliation of all peoples to one another, and to God's holy kingship, and that Jesus is the one who shows us what love looks like in the small ways and in the love of self-sacrifice that sac gives itself to death so that we might live. And in this, we have joy, eternal joy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, let us walk into this year with this sense of hope and peace 
and love and joy. Let us sing now as a testament to our joyfulness and our desire to live in this way as we see the truth of Christ. Thank you for listening to this message from Fort Gary MB Church. We hope that what you heard challenged you to think in new ways about Jesus Christ and the life that we are called to through his death and resurrection. If you have any questions about who we are as a church, our mission, or have any other questions in general, please do not hesitate to contact our office email at info at fgmb.ca. Be blessed.